In 1986, the world was introduced to Dragon Quest, one of the most influential RPG series of the age. And a work that has endured for nearly four decades, continuing to inspire mystique and curiosity across multiple generations. Birthed from the mind of Yuji Horii and drawing influence from Western RPGs like Ultima and Wizardry, it's not a stretch to say that Dragon Quest as a series is one of the finest works of media to come out of Japan with multiple games, spin-offs, and even theme parks dedicated to it. Its legacy is such that it is largely regarded as a progenitor of what RPGs would eventually become, introducing a multitude of characteristics that would later be carried over and become commonplace in the genre. At a time when RPGs were more inscrutable, often requiring detailed guides to navigate, Dragon Quest was the beginner-friendly adventure to sate its wider and sometimes younger audience on the Famicom, a fantasy land with a simple story focused on a hero who would back banish the darkness and bring forth an era of peace following their destined victory. This approach has remained fairly consistent to the present day, as has the involvement of its recognisable art style courtesy of Akira Toriyama. With such an influential mangaka at the helm design-wise, it stood to reason then that following the success of Dragon Quest in Japan commercially, it would spawn not only video game sequels, but garner representation in other forms of media too, like anime adaptations and manga spin-offs, with one of the more recognisable birthed in 1989 called Dragon Quest The Adventure of Dai. This particular sub-series would spawn 37 manga volumes, two anime adaptations with the latter consisting of 100 episodes, and also an action RPG known as Infinity Strash Dragon Quest The Adventure of Dai, of which this video has kindly been sponsored by Square Enix. Now, Infinity Strash is initially an opportunity to relive the adventure from 1989, but it's certainly not a requirement in order to enjoy the game. It begins with the titular hero Dai facing off against a mysterious foe and losing his memories. The journey that follows is all about reliving the experiences that led him to this moment, and the game does a good job in presenting that, making the story very easy to follow. Take it from me, I've never read the manga, nor have I watched the anime series, but I've been having a great time with it, both gameplay and story-wise. And that doesn't surprise me, considering the strength of its foundation. To this day, The Adventure of Dai is one of the best-selling manga series of all time, boasting around 50 million copies in circulation come the present day. It has longevity and lasting appeal that has endured for over three decades, and the game showcases this in a multitude of ways. What I applaud it for immediately is that it's not trying to one-up its source material. In fact, it feels like a celebration of it in some ways, combining art from both the manga and anime adaptation during many cutscenes. It feels like you are watching the manga in motion during these sequences, but Infinity Strash will up the ante at certain points for the heavier hitting moments, bringing forth its own pre-rendered cutscenes to the mix that are animated very well, supplemented with strong voice acting, of which I chose to use English this time around, though Japanese is of course also available. How dare you! Avon was my master! You'll pay for that! These elements are only positive influences that bring the characters of this world to life, and they do them justice as well. Adventure of Dai has a great cast of characters, both main and supporting. Though their archetypes will be familiar to any fan of RPGs or shonen manga, the writing is solid enough that it makes them relatable and engaging. There's clear motivation for their journeys, layers of depth to their characters built around core convictions, and a clear show of development that is paced well. While it does sometimes feel that certain cutscenes are a bit rapid in terms of how they are presented, I've largely been on board with all the developments concerning the cast. And the same certainly holds true for the story as well. A simple fantasy premise that was a product of its age, but still shows that if delivered properly, it can still be as enjoyable to experience in the present day too. And that's what I like about Infinity Strash. It's not going for anything thematically complex, nor does it touch on deep themes. Rather, it prefers to stick to the roots of Dragon Quest as a series, and I'm all for that. 
Now the story itself proceeds between chapters that are then split into a number of quests. These quests are split into types like story, which involves cutscenes and gameplay that advance the plot, free quests that function as side missions to level up, and adventure which are purely all story focused with no gameplay. You proceed through these until you get to the end of the chapter and rinse and repeat. When you do take control, you'll be actively moving one member while supporting characters act autonomously around you. Each character has similar controls, but holds their own unique skill set and role within the group, ranging from fighters like Dai to support members like Mam. Referring to a PS4 controller, square is your normal attack, triangle, circle and R1 access your skills that you unlock more of as you level up, L1 is used to guard, X to dodge, and the control sticks allow for both camera control and movements. These can also be rebound in the options menu. The L2 and R2 buttons access the character's unique skills. For example, Dai can call on the power of dragons for limited periods to boost his stats with L2, and then use his ultimate skill called a coup de gras with R2. It's a streamlined battle system and pretty much comes with everything you would expect and want in an action RPG. There's also the use of perfect guard and dodges that charge up your power meters to use the aforementioned special abilities, so those who grasp the system are rewarded for their skill. Item usage is also available with the use of the directional buttons, as is the ability to switch members on the fly. As said before, all members have different playstyles as well, so there's variety on offer in terms of the character you choose to control, befitting a wide array of playstyles. That being said, it's all well and good an action RPG having these options, but the most important question remains to be answered. Is it actually fun to play? Well, I'm happy to say that yes it is. The controls feel tight and responsive, which is always the first thing I look for in games like this. Does it actually allow for skill expression and fast reflexes? Adventure of Dice certainly doesn't break the barrier in terms of what you normally see in action RPGs, but its bones are very solid. Now, while traditional equipment management doesn't exist in this game, it substitutes this with an addition called Bond Memories, which are visualizations of Dai's past adventures. Each member can equip a maximum of six of these, dependent upon their level. You get these periodically as you progress the story, and they give the equipped character stat boosts or augment their skills further. The skills themselves, along with the Bond Memories, can also be upgraded with materials and gold found throughout the adventure ensuring that progression is tangible at all points. Add on traditional levelling up, and Adventure of Dai once again has a solid grounding here. In addition, there is also another method to gain Bond Memories too, and that is through the Temple of Recollection. In here, your character levels are reset to 1, and you battle through a number of floors. As the story progresses, more floors will open up, and the further you go, the better the rewards. In here, you not only get upgrade materials once again for your bond memories and the like, but you'll also have the opportunity to find rarer bond memories, which will aid you in the later parts of the game, and they generally have much better stats as well. Generally speaking, if you're having trouble at certain points in the main story, you can always revisit the temple to find better bonds or upgrade your current character builds. The Temple of Recollection is a great little hub to get stuck into the combat and indeed complete your sets of Bond memories, as each chapter has a set number that you can find. Though the game doesn't require you to do so, it acts as a sort of sticker collection that recaptures the moments of that part of the story, allowing you to revisit scenes with some visual payoff to boot. Collecting more of these will also yield other benefits like flat stat increases too, so it's certainly in your interest to try and get as many of these as you can, and it acts as a nice option if you'd rather take a break away from the story to just get stuck into the fluid combat. And that's what it all boils down to, Infinity Strash doesn't have an abundance of bells and whistles because it doesn't need to. It doesn't do anything to break the mould, but it's still great because it has a defined and clear identity in that its main purpose was to be a retelling of the manga presented through the medium of an enjoyable action RPG. 
A game that celebrates the source material, brings its own additions to the series, but is also easy to pick up for those unfamiliar with the series. In a way, Infinity Strash is a reminder of what Dragon Quest as a series holds on to even to this day. While other RPGs will sometimes stumble over themselves attempting to reinvent the genre, games like The Adventure of Dai prefer to stay simple and welcoming to all. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe for more JRPG content and consider joining my Patreon if you're interested. Peace.